I should know everything about that. Yeah. I didn't really understand the my period. Like we understand on a practical point what it is, but we don't understand the intuitive knowledge and the deeper meanings of our cycles. Yeah. We don't understand health. Mm. We certainly don't learn good eating habits through school. Um, that was one of the biggest things for me was... Well, one now in school there's a lot of allergies and there's a lot of restrictions on the food that you can even send your kids to start with but you know my child was coming home with a full lunchbox because they get 10 minutes to eat Mm. and then quick go and play and then quick come back and sit in the classroom and Mm. I just thought you know what how many adults go to work and they never take a lunch break or they just quickly scoff junk food down Mm. over the computer and I, yeah, I just kind of thought about where does that come from and you trace that back to school and I feel like it comes back to that. We're so conditioned that our work and our education is so much more important than actually looking after ourselves mm-hmm. and actually trying something new, like following a dream. Often we're shut down, well, that's silly. You know, how are you going to make a lot of money doing that? Yeah. So, yeah, I guess... Really, the question of homeschool is, well, what what is it that you want your child to get out of school? Most people will say, well, I want them to be successful and educated. Okay, well, what does success and education look like to you? And, yeah, and I just guess keep churning those questions. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Um, I heard this. I don't know who said this, but I remember what they said. So they said that, it's not homeschooling, it's life schooling and that the world really is your school. Yeah, I love that quote. And actually a few people have said to me, oh, so you're their teacher? And I say, no, life's their teacher. Yeah. And they kind of, what, what? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah. Turn that around back on them and like, what? (laughs) It's so true. Look, experience teaches us so much more than anything that you can read or just practically be told. Yeah. And anybody knows that to be true. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting that the idea of um, a person, you know, telling another person this knowledge to teach them. But um, I think, as we said, kids naturally explore and are inquisitive and they learn just through their curiosity and their interest in things. So they absorb this knowledge from a whole lot of different places. A hundred percent, and they have more of an understanding of it when they do have the time to, you know, use their imagination and really, yeah, free think about everything. There's also in schools now, I mean, we have one teacher to up to, what, 30 students in some schools, Mm -hmm. and there is a a higher need of special needs now, um, which is a whole other thing, but... Yeah, I mean, how can that one teacher really cater to all of those students? Mm. They do the best they can, but we put all this, all the same age group in one classroom and we expect them all to be the same and we want them all to be at the same level. Yeah. And again, it goes back to that factory worker mentality because that's what you needed to be. So we were yeah. manufacturing our kids that way through our schooling system, but we're not going to survive in the world like that anymore we're not going to survive if we're just the same and we're mundane and we just do what we're told Mm. everything's changing so another thing is testing in school so going back to when I started and I hadn't de-schooled myself and I thought okay where's my curriculum and you know how often do I send in their tests to show where they're at and you know, there are no tests with homeschool you you can if you want to so a parent will choose how they want to homeschool and we can talk more about what that looks like soon Um, but the reason why we test our students in school is because the teacher needs to know where the child's at so she can report something back to the parents because a teacher is really going to have no way of knowing how well a child is doing without those tests how are we supposed to know 20 kids like I would find that overwhelming Mm -hmm. having 20 kids like you know, and having to know each of them individually, you just couldn't get there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of of work for the teacher, isn't it? Yeah, and some children need more than others at different times, and you just can't cater to that in the schooling system. Yeah, what you are saying just then reminded me of this um, picture I saw, a cartoon. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen it. I think it's been around Facebook a bit. So it's like 
lined up a whole lot of different types of animals, like a monkey, a snake. You've probably seen it, like yeah, elephant. the Einstein and then, quote. Yeah, and then there's a, a tree, and they say, like, the test is to climb to the top of the tree. Yeah. So, obviously, the students who have those strengths in them who can climb the tree will um, get 100% on the test. Yeah. But some students won't be able to. Yeah, like a fish. I think the, uh, the photo shows a fish and says... Oh, yeah. If you test a fish on its ability to <laughs> climb a tree, yeah. then that fish is going to look like a failure. Yeah, I haven't heard that quote. Yeah, and that is 100%. Yeah, so another one of my Einstein, or my favourite Einstein quotes is, imagination is more important than knowledge. And we actually have some research now to back that up, which I only came across yesterday and I found extremely interesting. So the research started from NASA, they wanted to test the creative potential of their scientists and their engineers. And they approached two, um, I guess these guys might have been like scientists or something as well. But they approached two people by the name of Dr. George Land and Beth Jarman. And after doing this test, that led them to more questions of where does creativity come from? You know, is it learnt? Are we born with it? Does it come from our experience? And so they went on to start testing children and they tested 1,600 five-year-old children and they measured, what do you think they measured at? As in imagination, um, um, with their ability. <laughs> yeah, 98%. Okay. Which is wow. like, so that's their, their, they were 98% genius in the category of awesome. imagination. That's the words Naturals. I was looking for. <laughs> so they thought, okay, well, we'll keep following these children. And five years later, they tested them again. So they'd started school from around the mm. age of five. Yep. So what do you think they were at at the age of 10? I'm going to um, let you guess all these. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're like 80. <laughs> uh, they were only 30% wow. genius. That's a massive... And so difference. they waited another five years. Huge. And when they were 15, they dropped down to 12%. This is making me feel really stupid now. <laughs> and then, when they'd finished with their schooling, what do you think they measured at then? Probably close to zero. Yeah, 2%. Wow. And so, basically, in a nutshell, they realised that the school system is robbing us of our creative genius yeah. because of the way we're delivering our information. So, what's happening is we have two different ways of thinking, and one is called divergent thinking, and the other one is called covergent. And so, one is when we use our imagination, and yeah. so that's, you know, we're creating new ideas and being innovative and things like that. Um, using our intuition and the other is when we're more using our intellect so we're we're judging we're deciding yep. and we're criticizing evaluating and both of those I mean we need both of those forms of thinking yeah yep. but what's happening in the school system is the kids are forced to use both at the same time so we're asking our kids to be creative and think up new ideas yep. but then so we kind of switch on the brain and when we're in our imagination, our brain lights up. Mm -hmm. So it's full and active and all these neurons, you know, we can grow our, our like brain neurons and things like that through imagination. And, but then it's shut down straight away from understanding that we need to find the right answer. Mm -hmm. Because school really is about like, we already have all the answers, everything's already been done and we're going to teach you Yep. what we already know does yeah. that make sense it's not really allowing children to make up their own answers because it's going to be corrected straight away yeah so yeah so even in my studies now if the teacher asks a question i'm already thinking about what they think is the right answer exactly <laughs> and that's that's exactly how schools manufactured to be as yeah. i said to be those good factory workers yeah going back all those years ago when it began mm. So, yeah, that's really interesting that they studied that. Yeah. I'm interested to to find out how they studied, like how they measured that creativity as well. Yeah, well, if you look him up, he's got information like online. He's okay. got a brilliant YouTube clip. I actually just did a blog on this and I've yeah. done a link to his YouTube clip and I think he may have written a book. Okay. So, yeah, when you go through the comments of his YouTube clip, People have asked for more information like you and there's some links and stuff yep. in there. So 
I haven't fully gone through and read all of that. Um, what was his I don't name know. again? Oh, Dr. Dr. George Land, was it? Sorry, you just... Yeah, <laughs> I know, I just clicked <laughs> off it. Uh, maybe we could put a link to it on yeah. the yeah. podcast. Okay, good, yeah, yeah, for everyone. Um, but yeah, I don't know. For me, science doesn't really excite me. So I truly believe that when we know something's true, we can feel it in our body. Like, yeah. we just know when something's true. You hear mm-hmm. it, you're like, yep, yeah, that's truth. Mm-hmm. And I believe that this is how we used to live when we ran more on our natural instinct. And we understood what plants to eat and what plants not to eat. Like, we understood so many things before science. Mm-hmm. Science is now trying to understand how we knew these things when they're only just discovering it through science. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So. Everybody's wanting scientific studies and all this proof of everything. And that's great if it's coming from a natural, inquisitive, you know, like my son said to me the other day, Mum, why can I see the moon at daytime? (laughs) You know, like, so we naturally want to know why. And that's cool. We can probably go and, you know, research that and find things out. And if it's not there, maybe we'll go off and try some things for ourselves. Um, That's cool, but if we're just relying on science to tell us everything all the time, then I just feel like we're shutting Mm. ourselves down at at our creative potential and that creative genius that that we have, that they've studied. Yeah. Yeah, going back to the intuition thing, you just reminded me there was lots of studies done. I don't know what the studies are called, but if I can find it, I'll find a link again. Yeah. Um, um, so they found that the heart, obviously this is through science, but they found that the heart has this massive magnetic field and the heart is the first to detect things. Yeah, so, I've seen that one too. Yeah. Greg yeah. Braden talks a lot yeah. on that. I think yeah. he might have been involved with that study. And actually, funny enough, our heart is the first thing that's formed in the womb too. Yeah. Our yeah, heart's so beating true. before the brain and everything's fully formed. Yeah. So... Yeah, our heart certainly does have intelligence. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's, and um, also there's more neuron, I think it's the synapses in the gut yep. and in the brain. Yeah. So I feel like from what you're saying, it's almost like we underestimate the power of that intuition in the heart and creativity compared to the intellect. 100%. Deepak Chopra talks a lot about that, that yeah. our gut really does have a brain. And so when we're getting nerves and we talk about this gut instinct, like, oh, and people say, oh, I don't know, my gut's telling me no. Yep. And it's like, but yeah, we're so conditioned through school that it's just the brain. We just focus mm. on the brain and just, you know, like I said, we're manufacturing people to fit into this society that's been built. And you know, you want to delve deeper into that. I mean, follow the money. Who Who's writing this curriculum? Who's yeah. creating the school this way? Why are they doing that? What sort of people do they want to come out of that? Yeah. And what worries me the most today is there's so much depression and things around. And I believe in our time now, like we've stepped into the age of Aquarius and this is our time to be independent, create new ideas. It's about breaking down these old patriarchal systems that don't work. And we're so shut down from our schooling system and the expectations of society that we're stuck. And I think this is where people are becoming depressed because they've shut down mm. their imagination. They don't know how to use it anymore. Yeah. And Or they probably automatically shut it down as a default. Mm. Just from, you know, always needing to have the right answers to do well in school. And then we make our parents proud and, you know, we might get an award up there (laughs) on the assembly and things like that. But no one's getting awarded for their imagination. I hate this nap plan. (laughs) I hate the new nap plan. I actually wrote a letter and (laughs) let my kids do it. I said it's not testing them on who they are. It's not testing a child on their artistic skills, their values, the way they are in teamwork. It shows nothing about their imagination. Like, it's just maths, English, you know, your typical bookwork stuff. And we're rating our schools by how well our students are doing these NAPLAN tests. And schools spend a lot of time preparing their students to do well in NAPLAN so their school looks good and gets a good rating. And I'm like... 
this is ridiculous. My child isn't going to go to school to make your school look good. Like, if I want my child to learn...